What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to share another 3D scene and compositing breakdown of one of these shots in our recently uploaded City Border 3 add-on for Blender trailer for our new space kit. I'll be breaking down this low angle shot that sort of reveals this satellite that our astronaut character is looking at in the scene. And I've just added some embers here as well as our 3D asset from our City Border 3D add-on in a fairly simple composite here. As usual, this video is more of a walkthrough than an actual tutorial, but hopefully we'll give you some ideas on how you can add these elements to your videos and composite them effectively into live action footage inside of Blender as well. Anyways guys, without further ado, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is our shot without any compositing in layout view. And you can see we've just tracked our City Builder 3D satellite here into our scene. That was my first step in creating this shot. I've just imported that footage inside of Blender's motion tracker here. And I've actually tracked different points on the sky here to get a fairly effective tripod track uh, on the clouds here. Now obviously using such a low contrast points for tracking data such as these clouds is not ideal. However, it did end up working for the scene. You can see that the tracking points are sticking fairly effectively here. And uh, we've just done a very basic tripod track with a solve error of 2.8 pixels. So definitely not ideal, but ended up working pretty well for the final composite as it looked pretty seamless. And fortunately, since the shot was on a tripod, there wasn't a lot of parallax in the scene. So we could get away with a fairly high solve error of 2.8. So anyways, I've imported this tracking data onto our 3D camera inside of Blender. And then of course, I've added our footage as the background in our scene and in 3d view the shot was super simple to create once I tracked that footage I've just added our city builder 3d asset in the deep background of our shot and you can see if I just go into rendered view really quick this is what our asset looks like you can see it's just kind of a satellite dish type vibe with some solar panels on it so I've added some reflectivity to the solar panels as well and of course I've grunged up the main portion of this radio tower here as well I've added some caution stripes here and just created some variation in the texturing of this asset and added some grunge to it and such with this concrete material. But, you know, super simple setup here. I've just imported this asset fully textured into our scene. This one is called Satellite, but obviously in this specific shot, we're using it more as kind of a radio tower. So of course you can use this asset in a variety of different ways, but I think you'll find that it's fairly detailed to add in the mid or deep background of your shots. And even for up close renders, it's pretty optimized as well. So anyways, I've added this satellite in the deep background of our shot, just kind of found where I thought it would be nice to reveal the satellite in its entirety. So kind of the end of the shot here is where we actually see the tower of the satellite. So a lot of this comes to just storytelling, trying to just kind of have it off to the edge of the frame here at first, and then revealing what our character is looking at at the end of our shot here. So pretty simple setup here. To light our scene, all I've done here is add a very basic HDRI. As you can see here from our live action shot, we just have a very cloudy environment. So I've tried to match that with an HDRI. So you can see if I re-enable our satellite and go into rendered view here, and I'll just go into our camera settings and turn off our transparent background. You can see the HDRI that I've added to light our asset has a fairly similar quality of light to our live action plate. So that's going to help integrate our CG into the live action as best we can with a minimal amount of effort. In addition to adding this HDRI, I've also just added a very basic ground plane to our scene with a similar color to the ground in our environment. Since our character is in a live action desert, I've just used a ground plane here, tinted the color of our ground. So you can see if I enable it here for a second. We'll disable it as a shadow catcher. You can see that this is just going to create some more realistic bounce lighting on our asset itself and make sure that asset is more integrated into the scene. Now, again, as I mentioned in the previous video, it's better if you actually use an image texture of the actual environment on this ground plane, as well as an environment projection all around your 3D asset that you're trying to integrate into the scene. But a lot of the time for simple shots, you can get away with an HDRI and a basic ground plane and it'll look 95% as good and save you a lot of time in the post-production process. So I've just done this very basic setup here. That's how I rendered out our CG asset. In addition to adding this radio tower, I also wanted it to rain embers in sort of an apocalyptic feeling. So as you can see here, I've just added a particle system that rains these ember particles down upon our scene here. And how I've done that is I've just actually used a preset from our weather effects add-on. I've used the snow preset, and then I've actually gone into our snow particle collection and increased the emission strength on that material so that these embers would have the organic shape of the snow, but actually emit light as if they're, you know, embers in the scene. So uh, we're just using a little snow preset there. And uh, this is a way you can kind of just kit bash our weather effects add-on to create a little bit more of an interesting effect 
of these particles falling. I've also added a turbulence field with a strength of one and a size of one just to break up the movement of these particles as well to give them a little bit more of a weightless feel because uh, the snow is coming down a little bit too quickly and I thought embers would, you know, since there's heat on them, they might float around a little bit like sparks. So gravity wouldn't affect them quite as much. So that's why I've added this turbulence field to kind of break up their movement a bit and keep them in the air a bit longer. So I've added this snow emitter here above our scene and you can see it's just a plane right here. And you can obviously do this without weather effects as well. This is just a basic particle system setup. I've just tweaked a few of the settings here. So I'm emitting 3000 particles over 400 frames and then just kind of playing around with the physics here. I've added a little bit of drag to slow them down a bit. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just a fairly simple particle system there to bring our world to life a bit better. So after adding our CG radio tower, as well as our embers particle system, I've separated each of these elements out on their own separate view layer. I've added our foreground spaceship on one view layer, and we're just exporting both of these view layers on a multi-layer OpenXR sequence so that we could export multiple passes and contain all that data in one file. I've just exported our combined beauty pass of our foreground spaceship in addition to an ambient occlusion pass so we could have control over those deep shadows on the element. And then for the snow and embers layer, I've exported an emission pass because these uh, embers are emitting light in addition to the combined beauty pass and Z pass for this element as well. But anyways, that was the 3D setup for these elements. I've exported both of those view layers as multi-layer opening star sequences, as I mentioned before, and then got into the compositing setup here inside of Blender. So this is our node compositing setup. It's a fairly simple process here, guys. If you're not familiar with node-based compositing, it might look a little scary, but I assure you the node-based workflow is very powerful, especially when working with larger amounts of data. For simple composites like this, you can definitely get away with a layer-based compositor like After Effects as well. It just kind of depends on what your preference is. But anyways, let's get into this node tree and break it down. So we started off with our live action plate here and an undistortion and scale node. You can see if I just add a viewer here, what this output is looking like, just our live action plate by itself. Then the first thing we overlaid is the low angle render of our satellite. So you can see if I just connect this here, we've added our radio tower over top of everything. And I've just done a few basic effects on our satellite before it's overlaid on top of our footage here. So you can see if I go here, and take a look at our satellite render by itself. You can see that our ember particle system is lighting up our satellite, which is nice because we've enabled our snow embers collection as indirect only for this view layer, meaning they will only affect the actual lighting of our CG element, but they won't show up in this actual view layer. So anyways, we're just overlaying this render on top of our footage. I've added our ambient occlusion to a multiply node to deepen the shadows a bit of our spaceship. So you can see if I just increase this all the way. It's deepening the shadows in the crevices of our spaceship. So I've just added a little bit of ambient occlusion there to comp it into the scene a bit better. Then I've also added a little bit of a tan color over top of our render as well. Just because it's in the deep background, I wanted to lift those shadows a bit and provide it a little bit of atmospheric fall off like I've mentioned before. So as things are off in the distance, oftentimes their shadow levels will be lifted in a way that makes sense for the environment and the surrounding lighting. So I've just lifted those shadows a bit then I've used a set alpha node to make sure that our alpha channel remained in place. And then finally here, I just have an RGB curves to bring down the brightness of the element a bit. And then I've also, you know, added a little bit of bokeh blur since our element is in the deep background and our focus is on the foreground character. It's important to have that blur to help integrate the element into the shot a bit better. So I've just blurred the element five pixels by five pixels on the X and Y axis. And then finally, we've overlaid that on top of our footage and we get something like this. So you can see maybe if we just bypass everything really quick what it looks like without all of those nodes added and then of course after we have something like this and you can see it's looking much better after adding our radio tower i've imported some roto data of our character i've actually rotoscoped our character out inside of after effects since i like using their roto brush tool as it automates a lot of the process for me so i'll actually do a tutorial on how you can do that because i'm not a big fan of rotoscoping inside of blender but i've just exported this roto data that contains just our character on an alpha channel. And then I've just overlaid our character once again on top of our footage here. And uh, you can see that I've just eroded and feathered the edges of our character here, just so it blended into the scene a bit better. So you can maybe see, you can see before with just that roto data by itself with those hard edges. So you can see once I've added this dilate erode node and set the alpha channel again, we uh, 
get something like this, which is obviously making sure that those edges is a little bit more seamless and integrating our character into the scene a lot better. So after overlaying our character, I've added a little bit of sunbeams coming from where the radio tower is, just for a little stylistic effect, not really needed, but you can see that once we add this, just adds a little bit of rays here. You can kind of see this ray over his shoulder can't really see it too much to be honest but it's just kind of creating some sunbeams coming from the top right of our scene here i have another example in this trailer as well where the sunbeams are a little bit more prominent so i'll be sure to do a breakdown on that as well but uh, fairly uh, subtle effect here. Then after all this, we've added a little bit of glare to our composite with this node, just to help bleed in the bright spots of the image. Just use the streak setting here with a high quality. And then finally, we wanted to overlay our actual ember data on top of our footage as well. So you can see here, this is our final result with the embers without any color correction. Go down here and show you guys this uh, embers render layer by itself, just so you can get an idea of what we're overlaying. So we just have our embers view layer here rendered out. I've eroded the embers a bit just so they weren't quite as big. I thought they were a little bit too big in the frame. So I've just used a dialyte erode node to dial them back a bit. So this is our mask from the dialyte erode node and we've used that mask to adjust the alpha channel. And then as you can see, I've set the alpha channel again with this guy. So just eroding those edges of the embers a bit with the dialyte erode node. Then to make sure these embers weren't too sharp and to help integrate them into the plate a bit better, I've added a little blur node here, blurring the X axis by six and the Y axis by four. I shouldn't have select the gamma setting here because we're getting a little bit of banding. We actually just want the bokeh option to make it a little bit more like lens bokeh. And uh, yeah, essentially after that, we've brought down the brightness a little bit of our embers like so. And then we've overlaid the embers on top of our live action shot with this alpha over node with a factor of 0.104. By default, this alpha over factor will be at one, meaning all of your embers will show up very intensely over top of your footage. So as you can see here, if we wait for a second, we'll see that here the embers intensely overlaid on top of our footage. But one thing you can actually do, especially for bright elements like this, or even more translucent elements, you can just dial down the factor a bit to 0.15 even. And now the plate will kind of shine through those elements and it won't be quite as intense, often more effectively integrating these particle systems into your scene even better. So this is our final composite from Blender. Of course, in Adobe Premiere, I've also added some Lumetri color for a Fujifilm look and then added some grain and Gaussian blur to help add a little bit more gritty and colder feel as well to the final image. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next on the channel. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects and filmmaking content, and I'll see you next time.